Good morning, everyone. It's Matt with Downrange Firearms. Uh, today, we're gonna. I've got some really exciting news. I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, we got our first metal shipment in, so we can start working on landing gear. Uh, we're still on back order on everything for all the wood components, so we're waiting for all that stuff. Um, so, as uh, I think we ordered everything from Aircraft Spruce, their cost on uh, on steel and uh, wood were pretty much the best that I could find on there. Um, all of the spruce that we were looking at, all of the wood products that we were looking at, everything's on back order except the little bit of plywood that we got in. So not enough to get started on the actual airframe, but what they did have in place uh, in, in hand was almost all of the steel that we need. We have one oddball side piece of uh, conduit that we need to get. Um, I haven't been able to find anybody that manufactures it yet, so I'm going to have to figure that one out and get creative. So we'll kind of chat about that one as the as the video progresses. But I figured if nothing else, we can do a quick and dirty uh, unboxing video. And you can see me tear into uh, all this good jazz and see what we got and kind of see how this is going to progress from here. So I just set up my other camera for a time lapse to show the uh, tearing into everything. I'll break in between on this camera so we can uh, kind of discuss some of the stuff we're doing. So what we have here is uh, a bunch of 4130 chrome molly steel. We have some 0.1 inch thick uh, sheet here and then we have some 0.125 sheet uh, plate. Uh, steel here so it's just going to be for different components of this project um because it's kind of a mixed bag of what's going through like the trunnion assembly the upper strut the lower strut and then the spring strut themselves uh that one's going to be the big kicker because the piece of material that we're missing is a one inch one and seven eighths inch od tube with a 0.063 wall um and I need uh, 20, about 24 inches of that for the construction of this. And I wasn't able to find that. I checked on a bunch of different uh, small till uh, shops to try to get it. Couldn't even find it on Amazon. Um, the only place that looks like they even make it that I could find was a custom shop. And you need a call for a quote. So I'm going to see that's going to be a little on the pricey side. So didn't, uh, didn't swing on that one yet. I don't have the springs or any of the end caps or any of that stuff in place yet anyway. So... We're not going to lose a whole lot of sleep over that one just yet. When we get a little bit more about getting the a little further along with getting the housings done and we get some of the other parts, then I'll probably spend a lot more time getting that tube stuff squared away. But in the meantime, let's dig into this stuff. We'll kind of talk about that as we open it, and then uh, we'll go from there. Yep, here we go. I know we're excited to see this bad boy, so nice 0.1 inch piece of plate steel. Um, that is going to make uh, most of all of the peripheral stuff, so the scissor equipment um, on the actual gear, and I'll break out uh, the plans here before we're done with this video, kind of point out some of the stuff that this is going to be making, but this is going to get used for cutting all of the uh, trunnion components with the exception of a little bit of this bigger piece, so it'll do most of the trunnion construction. Um, it's going to be on all of like the wraparound components that are out there, all of the connectors and uh, that the bolts are going to be going through. Um, like I said, it's going to be used for the the scissor uh, the scissor gear component of this sucker um, and some of the other plate components that are on there. So uh, this was actually cheaper than getting the individual ones because they actually had smaller plates, not all of which were actually in stock. They had the 72 inch plate, uh, 72 inch long by 18 inch uh, piece of plate in stock. So I'm like, well. We're going to have some extra, seeing as I'm new to welding, this is probably good for us to get some practice on. So when I start uh, getting into it, I have something I can work on instead of just jumping right into it. Same thing with the bending process, because that's going to be new as well. Um, I've got lots of books on the subject. Uh, obviously, YouTube is a wonderful resource for all this stuff. So I'm going to get some, so thankfully we have some extra material on hand for uh, practice and all that good jazz. So running forward with that, let's open the next piece of plate. All right, and there she is. Nice, thick, heavy plate. So that's going to get used. Um, that's part of the trunnion assembly that's gonna be on the top of the landing gear that actually is going to cause it to rotate up. So that's reinforced. So that trunnion assembly, and I'll show you on the plans when we get there, is actually going to be uh, the 125 and a piece of the 100 that after they're cut and formed, they're actually gonna to go together. So it'll be a, a thicker plate that's actually gonna get used for that rotating assembly. Um, 
should be interesting to see how this one goes between cutting and bending it and, uh, and, and getting everything aligned properly. So looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge for sure, but uh, we're going to see how this kind of progresses. Uh, last, we've got all of the tube. Um, like I said, minus that one and seven eighths tough. So if anybody has a line on that, knows about where to get it, any of that has a piece of it floating around that I can buy off them, beg, borrow, trade, or you know anything in between, please let me know. I'll crack open this last box. We'll take a little of the tube, go through all that stuff, and then uh, we'll finish on up. All right, what I'll probably do now is clean all of this stuff off the table, lay the plans out, and then kind of uh, do you a side-by-side -side comparison of what's going to go, where it's going to go, and all the good jazz that goes with that one. So uh, I'm going to turn the cameras off for a second, and we're going to go from there. Cool. All right, so we got the plans unrolled now on the table. Like we said, we've got our giant sheet of .1 steel, our .125. We have half inch and three quarter inch conduit, as well as our two, two and a quarter, and two and a half inch conduit. Um, so the big stuff right out of the gate, the most obvious one, is kind of our big one, our big trunnion here. So based on one of the books, they're saying in order to get this landing gear to function properly, you actually need to extend this. Uh, I believe that was to about seven inches, so that is our two and a half inch conduit here. That big fat guy that we have right here, that'll fit right in place. So to the best of my knowledge, uh, I need to extend that one. I don't have the specific dimension in front of me right now, but I have a pretty solid idea. I think it was about seven, seven and a half inches. I have the book. We're going to reference that before we, before we start cutting anything. But that sucker is going to go to that. And then as you can see, the rest of this trunnion, you have this wraparound component right here. That consists of this piece and this piece here. This guy right here is made of the .1 steel. Um, 4130, that's part of this big giant sheet off to the side. Uh, that's got that guy right there. Uh, so we're gonna cut that off of that material. Um, the littler piece right here is gonna be actually off of this piece of plate. This is the 0.125, I believe. Yep, 0.125 uh, thick plate. Uh, so we're gonna cut those from there and then we bend along here and along here and along there. Uh, and then they fold, wrap, and then they will come out here. So I'll need two of these for each piece of landing gear. So once those are cut in place and folded, they get welded onto that piece of tube with all the additions that need to go into there as well. That serves as the main uh, main structural support for the gear itself. Um, and then as you can see from this side view right here, that's going to have that central hole that's actually going to cause the point of rotation of the gear to come up and down. And then some of the other mounts. I believe this is where the scissor gear is actually going to mount to the actual uh, body of this. And again, that gets moved slightly in order to make the gear function properly. So that's going to be our two and a half inch tube and some of our plate. Uh, next down the line comes down to the upper strut assembly right here. Uh, what that's going to work with is going to be this guy right here. That's our two and a quarter inch two that we have here and then you can see a couple of uh, uh, locking points that are going to get welded into place as well that is from some of the extra um, two and a half tube this will get cut and then it'll be mounted for right there and then we'll weld that in place and obviously we have to add the uh, the nuts and all the components required to lock that thing up um, do, 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 do. so once that guy is kind of done in place and this is just a, a location of where that bearing is going to go um, or the gear, I should say, not the bearing. The gear is going to go. That actually is component, a different component further down the line here. So once that's all kind of assembled and ready to roll, we move on to the 2-inch tube, which is actually going to be further down. You can see the part right there, but we'll talk about that one in a second, seeing as we have a little bit more that we need to do with the plate that we have over here. So underneath that, that's what that's sitting on. The rest of that plate will get used for some additional stuff. Among those is your scissor gears. So we need to build two of these modules per uh, per landing gear. They're basically identical. They're just going to be offset by uh, an eighth of an inch, the thickness of the actual steel material, or the uh, 0.1 inch, I should say, that they're going to be off. So that's going to be a, a pretty straightforward cut, fold, etc. Once I get that uh, that whole process of folding the material down, like I said, lots of books, uh, lots of research, lots of YouTubes into figuring out how to do this and doing it right. 
Um, the additional material as well, uh, we build this assembly right here. So this is actually the rotation assembly that will mount mounted into the rest of that wing. So that's going to have a whole bunch of that, uh, those mechanisms and parts all in place because you can see the rod component right here. So this is uh, where the cutaways of where the rod's going to go, the, the main bar and the axle is going to go. So this whole assembly will mount inside of that and you can see the two minor gears that are going to be in place to not only raise and drop the gear but rotate at 90 degrees. Uh, inside of the well so that the one that's on the ground the tires are facing forward and when they're in the airplane they're actually going to be rolled up like that so that's what that whole mechanism is for and about um, and so that's what I, uh, some of the additional sheet steel as you can tell by that giant six foot piece that I have um, we have a lot of excess we're going to have a lot of excess and a lot of extra which is fine I'm perfectly content having the extra and the excess uh, gives me something to practice on because I am new to welding. This is going to be a new experience. Uh, I have some uh, a great teacher helping me out getting that one done. Uh, if you've met Brad at the store, you know what I'm talking about because that's his his uh, his world by trade. So he's the one that's going to help me and educate me. And we've got some uh, a nice welder that's kind of coming down the pipe that we're going to be utilizing. So I'm I'm real excited to see how that kind of progresses. Now the last of the stuff that we have here for this particular project. Let me move some of this stuff down. Get the rest of the plans in frame. All right, so the last of the stuff that we have here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. This here is the one and three quarter components that I mentioned. Uh, we don't have that material yet. I was not able to find it or locate it. I'm gonna. I'll, I'm going to ask some questions here as this kind of progresses. I don't need this right this second because I don't have the spring gear yet. Uh, I also don't have the caps or the, the miter gears yet that we need to get for this part of the project. So I'm not in a huge hurry to get to this portion of it. But once that's in place, that'll kind of finish thing up. But the two inch pipe, uh, so the two inch piece of stock tube that we have, that's going to go towards this component right there. Um, this guy, this guy, this guy. This component is actually the 90 degree view of that one. So these three are going to be that component. As you can see, we've got another wraparound piece right there that welds into place. It's going to also serve as one of the mounting points, I believe, for the scissor. Um, so that's going to kind of help control top to bottom and guide that and keep that aligned and where it's supposed to go. So that'll work in conjunction with the scissor gear there from there and there. Like I said, I'm learning how to do this as we go along. I'm going to, my plan of attack on this is I'm going to build one first learn how to do it on that one. If it goes well, great, we keep it and we run it. We build the second one. Uh, if that one is, turns into a learning experience, we don't have enough material here right now, but we will buy more. Uh, if that's the case, I will get some more tube for it. And uh, if it comes down to that, we'll have to, we may very well have to build a third uh, landing gear assembly, um, which I'm not opposed to. I, uh, I realize I have to learn how to do this before I can jump into it. This is going to be an airplane and I'd like to land and not have it crash, collapse, or have something bad happen. So I understand there's a learning component to this one. So there's a good chance that uh, I've got enough material to do two plus some, plus some extra material just for scrap. Like I said, practice materials and whatnot. But um, if it goes totally sideways, uh, We'll get the first one done, use that as a learning experience, train up on that, practice a little more as needed, and then we'll build the second gear. And then uh, if we need to, we'll build a third gear that'll actually be the, the number two and number three will be the actual real world, hey, we're gonna mount this in the aircraft one. So uh, now that winter's hitting, and I know it's gonna be a little while yet before any of the wood materials get in, because I hear that's more of a springtime thing. Um, hopefully we see it in the spring. Uh, we are going to get started on the landing gear and some of the other stuff. Uh, I'll probably end up getting some just regular birch and doing a mock-up of the cockpit itself. Um, I have some ideas of what I'd like to do with the cockpit as far as the seat and as far as the, 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 the all the equipment and the mounting and stuff like that. But even though we don't have the actual full-scale cockpit with the real materials on hand, uh, we can build a scale model and kind of go from there. So. Uh, Seeing how landing gear goes and all that good jazz, we may end up, uh, depending on how time goes over the winter, we may tack up a miniature cock, or not a miniature, a temporary cockpit, just the cockpit for me to be able to sit in and kind of get a feel for how we're going to do things like latches and the seat and how we're going to run cable and the pedals and all that stuff. Because if we can get that nipped in the butt in advance, it'd be really great when we've got to start doing assembly that we can just drop it in as opposed to having to discover it while working in and around the plane. Um, I'd really rather have that set up and ready to go and knowing how it's going to go in instead of risking damaging the actual uh, aircraft assembly once we get to it. So stay tuned for all this good jazz. Um, 
that's kind of where we're at now. Expect more updates as the time progresses. Um, this was just kind of doing that uh, unboxing and kind of showing you where all this stuff's going to go on our plans. Uh, pushing forward from here though, um, next video you should expect, hopefully the next week or two, uh, I'm going to be cutting material. So we're going to start cutting stuff out and you'll see a lot of stop action stuff or uh, uh, the, the, the fast motion uh, videos and stuff like that just because as we start to cut through stuff, um, you're going to watch me doing it live. So you're going to get to see me do a lot of this build stuff firsthand. Some stuff might be on camera, some stuff might not, it's just going to be depending on the circumstances. But uh, we're going to try to film and document and, and discuss everything that happens and progresses. So. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and uh, hit like, subscribe, tell your friends.